Finally, way back in 1965, a young Welshman in Australia was feeling homesick but didn't have the money for the airfare home. He did some thinking outside the box and hit on the idea of sealing himself up inside one and flying back as freight. He thought he'd nailed it. He did, though, need two friends to nail down the crate. It turned into a pretty hair-raising journey. Well, now Brian Robson is a rather more sensible 76-year-old and wants to reconnect with those friends who helped him with his crate escape. We're in the prison ward of Los Angeles General Hospital, where Brian Robson, formerly of Australia, has made an unexpected visit. His tale was as astonishing then as it is today. The Welshman and his belongings, who flew halfway around the world, stuffed into a cargo crate. Of course, we had enough, just enough room for a suitcase, uh, myself to sit with my legs up in the air, uh, my back against one wall sort of thing. Brian Robson was 19 at the time. The, the more I look at this, the more I just find it completely unbelievable that I did it. <laughs> it frightens me now. <laughs> He'd been working in Australia but couldn't afford to fly home, so asked his mates to put him in a box and post him. Early in the morning, I got in there and wriggled around a bit, put my knees up into my chest. Then, after saying goodbyes, they nailed the lid on and the, the truck came and picked it up and took me to the airport. What was it like inside? Frightening, terrible. Although the crate had this side up written on it, it was immediately turned upside down, as most airport workers do. Uh, and so I was standing on my neck and my head uh, for probably up to 23 hours, actually. In the end, he spent five days inside, barely alive by the time he got out. And he didn't even make it home. The crate ended up in Los Angeles, where an airport worker discovered it before climbing inside himself to demonstrate Brian's ordeal. And your breathing became very sort of restricted um, and it was cold uh, really cold did you regret it uh, I never regretted it even when you were in there even when I was in there I made my mind up and I was suffering I really was suffering in bad ways once the Americans were convinced he wasn't a Cold War spy Brian finally returned to Britain but despite huge media attention he never again made contact with the two Irish friends who'd helped him begin his voyage Half a century on, he wants to track them down. I'm not the most generous of people, but I'd buy them all the beers they want. <laughs> it would be quite amazing, actually. It would mean a lot. It would. He's finally written a book about his adventure. Finding the people who sent him home all those years ago would be the perfect end to a remarkable journey. Ben Chapman, News at 10, Cardiff. If you're out there, guys, get in touch. What an absolutely priceless story.